Hi, I'm Deborah Miranda, and I'm here to apologize. Last month, March 2019, I was supposed to be in a reading for the release of the Tupelo Press anthology, Native Voices. Unfortunately for me, I was under the misguided impression that the reading was happening at 7 p.m. It was actually at 4 p.m. So when I trotted in, somewhere around 7 o'clock, I was politely informed that the reading had already happened and a different one was being, was about to start. Well, to my chagrin, I had blown it. So I am here to keep my promise to help release this anthology in the only way I can. Coming to you from my study here in Lexington, Virginia. I thought I would give you a little background on the anthology first. One of the things that made me feel that this was a little different anthology was that the editors asked us to think of an author or a poem that had really had some impact on our own writing. And I immediately thought of Wendy Rose's poem, Excavation at Santa Barbara Mission. That poem came to me, came into my life when I was not a young person, but definitely a young poet, when I was still figuring out how poetry, what the work of poetry was in my life. I felt the deep desire to write, but I did not quite know where that desire would take me. So Wendy Rose's poem is pretty important because it was the first time I had read the poetry of another poet whose ancestors had been missionized. In California, the Spaniards came and built 21 missions up the coast of Southern California, from basically from San Diego up to Sonoma, so even into Central, Cal Central Coastal area. Those missions were genocidal. I'll leave it at that. Wendy Rose's poem is beautiful, but also brutal. It's a this poem has an epigraph. Wendy Rose writes, when archeologists excavated Santa Barbara Mission in California, they discovered human bones in the adobe walls. Although it's definitely tricky to assume that the speaker of the poem is speaking in the author's voice. One of the things you should know about Rose is that she is a trained anthropologist and she has done quite a bit of work being an insider in the Academy. Excavation at Santa Barbara Mission by Wendy Rose. My pointed trowel is the artist's brush that will stroke and pry, uncover and expose the old mission wall. How excited I am, for like a dream, I wanted to count myself among the ancient dead as a faithful neophyte, resting there and in love with the Padres and the Spanish hymns. A feature juts out, marrow like lace, piece of a skull upturned a cup, finger bones scattered like corn, and ribs interlaced like joya. So many bones mixed with the blood from my own knuckles that dig and tug in the yellow dust. How fragile they have become to float and fall with my touch, brittle white tips shivering into mist. How helpless I am, for the deeper I go, the more I find crouching in white dust, listening to the whistle of long bones breaking apart like memories. My hands empty themselves of old dreams, drain the future into the moisture of my boot prints. Beneath the flags of three invaders, I am a hungry scientist, sustaining myself with bones of men and women asleep in the wall, who survived in their own way Spanish swords, Franciscans, and their rosary whips, who died among the reeds to wait, communion wafers upon the ground, too holy for the priests to find. 
They built the mission with dead Indians. 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 You can hear that repetition at the end of the poem. And when you look at it on the page, it's clearly a hard rectangle, a kind of headstone or an adobe brick. It reminds me of all the different ways we have to face the reality of what happened to California Indians with a little ceremony, with some grief, with some acknowledgement that the four directions are still there, and in the end, also, with rage. And I say that because this poem has no forgiveness in it. It doesn't forgive those who put those Indian bones in the mission. Instead, what it does is it creates a connection between this woman, this speaker who identifies as a scientist, and allows the boundaries between that persona and her indigenous self to merge. She writes, so many bones mixed with the blood from my own knuckles. In that moment, she's touched by the ancestors. They enter into her body. They decolonize her. They remind her who she really is and what she really wants to do with her life. And what she really wants to do in this poem at the end is speak the truth. They built the mission with dead Indians. That's a truth. It's a brutal truth, and she will not allow it to be denied anymore. So then I had to think about poems I'd written where I could feel that influence from Wendy Rose, that desire to that desire to feel the ancestors in my blood, that desire to speak brutal truths about California's mission era, which, to be honest, California does not want me to speak. Here's a poem called Juliana, 1803. You should know that the word monjerio in this poem is a Spanish word. Technically, it means the nunnery, but in the California missions, it was the word used for what was called the women's quarters. All young girls between seven and eight and, adult, and adulthood, any un unmarried female, went into the monjerio at night and the door behind them was locked by the priests. This came about because the Spanish were horrified by the fact that indigenous men and women decided their own partnerships, including a large population of what we might call now a third gender or a two-spirited person. But men and women married and separated uh, were pretty much as they pleased. Um, children were always cared for, and that was the main thing. This idea of an autonomous sexuality was horrifying to the Spaniards. So they locked up the women to protect them from Indian men, of course, which only made them more vulnerable to priests and soldiers. That's where this poem takes place, in the Monjerio, and the speaker is Juliana in the year 1803. The iron lock turns at dusk. Our parents on the other side of the mission village, us girls in this dark room. The priest carries the key in his robe, gives it back to the madre at dawn so we can join him in prayers before receiving our work orders. I've hated night as long as I can remember. When the padre came to our hut, told my mother I was seven years old now, old enough to require the monjerio, she told me, remember the stars. Remember you'll see them again someday. But I've forgotten. Are they silver or gold? 
Which direction do they move? Where is the one my mother warned me was sly and mean-spirited? She told me once that blazing stars with long tails were souls on their way to the afterlife. I wonder if the sky burns all night now. Some of the younger girls still miss their mothers, cry half the night, wet themselves. They keep the rest of us awake. I don't feel sorry for them. I hiss the curses I learned from the soldados to frighten them, make them shut up. That pinche workday is long enough without losing sleep, too. I don't remember being that weak. True, I had my two older sisters. For years, they kept me tucked between them all night. If the door opened in the darkness, if soldiers picked the lock or stole the padre's key, or if the padre himself made one of his inspections, Dolores pushed me behind her. Inez covered me with the blanket. Till they married those brothers and got out. Now I lie awake at night, tuck my back into this corner I've claimed, and defend when I have to. Smelling some poor woman's shit as she crouches over the trench in the corner, moaning that the pozole this morning must have had rotten meat. My own bowels twist and boil, but please, God, let me make it till morning, and the privacy of a bush or a hillside. And I think about that soldier, Demetrio, the one who came with the San Blas infantry from some place called Mexico. The Spanish guards laugh at him, call him Chulo, which means, I think, half-breed. They ask him which jail the military pulled him out of, what crime did he commit, and has he learned how to shoot an escopeta? They make him sound like a little boy. I know he's not. Yesterday, on the path returning from the lavanderia, I hung back, pretended my basket of wet clothes was too heavy. He slipped me a string of dark red beads, my favorite, and said he would speak to the Padre soon. Then he pressed against me, knocked my basket into the dirt, spilled all that hard work. He put his hairy mouth on mine. I couldn't move. Clara called my name and he pushed me away, ducked back into the trees. Tonight, I can still feel his hands clutching my breasts. I wonder, I wonder what it would be like to see the stars again. On page 286 and 287, I have an erasure poem. The original document is a letter written by Junipero Serra, who was the priest who founded the California missions. Unfortunately, there was a mistake in the editing process and the gray shading that shows you how I created the erasure poem was, didn't make it onto the page. So what you see on page 286 is the whole letter from Sarah. And on page 287 is my erasure poem made out of that letter. This mistake will be corrected in future editions of the book. So I encourage you to create your own erasure poem out of Sarah's document. It's kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? subversive, naughty, bad, but an awful lot of fun. The poem that I created from Sarah's letter is called A Poem, and I intentionally pulled from Sarah's letter the voice of an Indian person. Because there is no written documentation by California Indians from the mission era. Those voices are missing in the archive. Or are they? I enjoyed doing this erasure poem and pulling the voice of an Indian person from behind the scenes, between the lines, under the words of Junipero Serra. A poem we here 
are composed of earth, valley, and rivulets, vines loaded with grapes, and abundance of roses. We Indians on this coast carry on very civil, old and young, decent on our journey. We treat with confidence and goodwill all lives, always care for the whole multitude, a kind of wild god. Song of Iur. Iur is one of the Kumayaai words for Huniperus californicus or a juniper bush. One last poem, The Tears of the Sun. Tears of the Sun um, has an epigraph that unfortunately didn't make it into the book, but the epigraph is from a um, historical document which, in which um, a woman from the Santa Barbara mission who was unnamed almost started a revolution she had a vision in which she was told that if she baptized the people with the tears of the sun, it would reverse or undo the, mission, the missionaries' baptisms and give the Indians back their souls. Tears of the sun. The river is full of mica. When we swim, our bodies shimmer, wrapped in constellations of stars. Our forearms swirl and sparkle like the Milky Way. Legs glint with galaxies. Our hands glitter gold as if dipped in stardust. In July's white-hot sun, sparks of the cosmos bathe us with the dust of all that has come before us. See how we are embers waiting to blaze and ignite. See how the river dresses us, lost, stolen, dispossessed, broken, in living bones of granite, in the light of the ancestors. Thank you.